to Neely. You're with us live. You're with us live from F2G. Hey, 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 I am Tanil. We're going live from F2G, and I'm here with the awesome humbleness of this beautiful voice and spirit. I so love you. Like I, I love her so much y'all. And we are amazed and excited and uber excited to have her with us. Miss Lissy Ladakin. Woo! Oh my gosh. I've been waiting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh no. I've been waiting to just, I, I've been like anticipating this interview. Oh, thank you so much. Same here as well. I'm so excited to be getting to do this with you today. Thank you for reaching out. I'm so grateful. Oh my. Oh my God. This was literally, I have to tell you, it was like a, literally a God set up thing because I went on your page and I had just learned of you, like your music, not even a couple of months ago. And I was like, oh my goodness, back in November. And I was like, she sounds so nice. And the spirit that's on you when you sing, I'm like, her music is so calm. And she has this humble spirit and her message is amazing and so i went you know god i wish we could get an interview with her i wish we could interview and so i left it alone and then december came and you dropped your song and i was like oh my goodness she just dropped a new song i really want to interview with her <laughs> and he was like call her reach out go to the inbox and ask her i was like you don't just reach out to famous people <laughs> you don't just do that and so i was like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do it and when you said you would do the interview i was like Seriously? Oh, <laughs> she gonna do the interview with us. I am so excited to get this interview done. I'm so happy to have you on with us. Um, you all are tuning in with us through the F2G page, Faithful right to God Entertainment with Miss Lissy Ladigan. And today we're just gonna have a conversation and kind of talk to her and learn more about her and what she does in the kingdom, period. It's just Oh, I'm so amazed. Okay, let me calm down. Let me get it together. Okay. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you. I'm equally as grateful to be here. I, yeah, thank you for reaching out. I'm so excited. Awesome. Well, let me ask you this. Um, We had a couple of questions we want to ask you. And what I want to do just getting started is pretty much to have a conversation with you about what you do. The first thing I want to ask you is that... Um, what do you consider yourself a psalmist or just a singer? Because I know some people separate the two. Right. Um, I would say both. It definitely started with singing. Um, I've been singing in church since I was like four years old. Um, grew up in church doing solos and that. But I also started songwriting when I was about eight. So um, I had journals and I would like pull them out. They were terrible songs, but <laughs> definitely it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit that they were terrible. Like, I feel like even now I listen oh to songs God. from my past and I'm like, wow, I really want to grow in that. And I think that's good as an artist, you know, you're always growing and getting better and you never, yeah. around, like, you're all, it's art that you're creating with God and you're, you're creating a space for people to encounter God. And so um, it's just fun to look back and see, like, even from that young age, God had put it in my heart and to, yeah, to be, I would say a psalmist and a songwriter, uh, sorry, a singer and a psalmist. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. So at eight years old, what kind of lyrics were you writing about? <laughs> um, so I actually had like multiple girl bands growing up in school that I would I would get girls in my class and, and guys to come be part of. Um, and we were writing about like, you know, breakup songs, but we're eight or we'd be writing about just like right. random life situations that we'd gone through, which were, you know, limited because we're eight years old. But it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Okay, so um, you said that you would be um, considered both. What is the difference between a psalmist and a singer? Um, I think with a singer, obviously, you know, God has given everyone a voice and that's so powerful. I, you know, I, I found out that um, each person has their own unique vocal cords that can't be replicated. You can mimic sounds, but like, it's so cool. Just everyone's vocal cords are so unique. I had a lot of... Um, appointments with vocal doctors where they put the camera down your throat and you can see your vocal cords and they're just sharing information and you know God's creation is so incredible it always points to how intricate he is and detailed he is in our lives so then as a psalmist you get to actually write about that relationship with God and what I love about that is you're sharing a side of your story and your history with God that nobody else has had the exact same replica of and so you might have gone through a similar situation as another artist, wow. but when you write, you're sharing intimate details of your connection with God and who he's been to you, how he got you through that circumstance. And you can see there's so many songs about love, heartbreak, 
um, anxiety, depression, different things, people go through loss and, and happiness, but they're all unique because people are writing from their own stories. So that's what made me really love yeah. songwriting is that I get a chance to say, hey, this is who God's been to me, or this is how my situation was and this is how God brought me out of it. And so um, both are really powerful, but yeah, I think lately I've been so grateful for the opportunity to write and also to be able to sing those songs. It's, yeah, they're both re really cool, so. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So it, we've heard about different psalmists that over the years have put their pens down and walked away. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Um, discouragement is a huge one. Also, it takes time. Um, God's time is not our time. God's timing is not ours. And I think that a lot of people can yes. get a lot of no's in the music industry before you start getting yeses. And um, there's also a lot of comparison. So I think it's really important to like keep your eyes on the Lord through everything. So even the the successes you do get or the disappointments that you get, it doesn't phase you because you're focused on Jesus. And if the heart behind why you do music and why you write and why you sing is to glorify God and to in turn point people towards his presence and towards him, um, then I think that uh you'll be less prone to walking away. And I've had moments where I've been like, I'm throwing in the towel, I'm done. Like that yeah. was the hardest no I've ever gotten or like that, oh I really gosh. want that door to work out and it didn't, but God really convicted my heart. And he's like, hey, I've actually like, this is bigger than you, you know? And that's the thing I think yeah. we lose perspective that it's actually so much bigger than anything of ourselves always. It's always about glorifying God and it's always about how it's going to help other people. And I've been very convicted that the music he's given me is to help people in turn connect with him and then also to receive healing and to um, yeah. find hope in situations and uh, and just also just to enjoy it. And, you know, and there's fun music and there's, yeah, different types of music that I want to write and have written. And so um, I think a lot of people throw it away because of, yeah, discouragement, knows it gets hard. But that's where I think it's really important to have a word from God and just you're not going to give up if you know that's what he's created you to do. Oh yeah, that's amazing. I'm so happy you didn't walk away. <laughs> we need you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So if you actually answered the other question, so I'm not gonna ask that one. But I wanted to know, um, like what are some specific roadblocks to watch out for when you're in this business? Yeah, um, people will try to take advantage of you. Um that's that's a hard one i think uh people will um i think there's a lot of things um i think that's where also it's just important to like have know your why it's really important to know your why because there's a lot of roadblocks in anything in life but specifically music i feel like um it's such a vulnerable thing for one like you're sharing your heart your story there's a lot of rejection in the music industry but there's also a lot of like acceptance and great things, you know, and um, and successes that do happen and a lot of wins that do happen. But if you don't know your why, then I think that um, the roadblocks will be something that will eventually stop you. Um, and that would be a shame. You know, there's everyone has a story and everyone's voice is powerful. And so I think even, yeah, comparison would be a roadblock, discouragement. Um, I would say even like the, the enemy trying to get you to stop sharing your voice. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people who go, oh, comparing themselves to this person or that person. But, um, you know, there's funny, there's a song I released a really long time ago, one of my first songs. And I, I listen to it now and I'm like kind of cringing a little bit. Um, it's called Love Back <laughs> People. But my uncle actually messaged me and he was like, you won't believe it, but I've listened to the song of yours like 20 times. I would play it all the time and I'm thinking it's like, your piece or your hands are one of the ones that have done better. And he said, love me back to whole. And it helped him through this really dark time. And I was just very humbled by that and realized, wow, God, you can use something I produced in my bedroom with limited knowledge. And you can use that in someone's situation more importantly than like a song that, you know, we did in the studio and it had all this stuff yeah. behind it. And so I think we should never as artists get limited by um, thinking that, you know, well, I don't have this or I don't have that, but focus on use what's in your hand to fulfill what's in your heart, you know, and um, yeah, and, and your voice is powerful, your voice matters. So ask God, you know, what he thinks of things as well. That really helps because the opinions of man can sway you whichever way, but we have to ultimately be led by what God says, you know? <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Yeah. And that's something that we talk about with the artists that we encounter. We tell yeah. them always to know your why because your why, your, there's a purpose in your why. Yeah. There's a reason in your why. There's a press for you to go for it in your why. And yeah. then to be able to know your roadblocks and know how to adjust yourself when things come about, mm -hmm. you know, and not to just fall subject under everything, you know, to really listen for God. Don't just ask him, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> ask him and then let him talk back to you yeah. <laughs> for an answer. Yeah. Because whenever he, that's amazing. Oh, go ahead, sir. No, no. Oh, whenever he like speaks into your life, he knows everything. He's all knowing, all mm -hmm. powerful. So that's the truth. And whatever he says, like trust him. Even if he's like, I'm gonna do this in your life, and there's nothing showing that, trust him yeah. on that and hold on to that because it's gonna happen. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's amazing mm -hmm. to me. This is like the ultimate thing for I think that we wanted to do with this is for people to actually hear your story and know about who you are and how you got to where you are. And we know that you release music um, as a single artist, as a, um, are you indie right now or yes. are you signed? Mm -hmm. Okay, as an indie artist. So with you being an indie artist now, did you, have you always wanted to be an indie artist or were you with a group before? Yeah, I've been in a couple of different like groups here and there. Um, they were all indie too. I think it took a really long time to find mm -hmm. my sound. And also um, I struggled with confidence a lot in my music. So I was very afraid to put out things. And um, I'm not that way anymore. God really dealt with that in my heart and mm -hmm. you know, gave me confidence. Like you said, he gave me a why, gave me a word and just brought a lot of really encouraging people around me. So I do have a lot of people who are um, very supportive and are helping me push me forward. Um, but yeah, I think um, it's been really cool to see how music works as an indie artist. Um, I think a record deal would be amazing. But then at the same time, I love that in our generation now, there's all these platforms and ways to put your music out like way, way, way long ago, you yes. had to on radio and that or TV and that was it. But now mm -hmm. they've made it really easy for you as an indie artist to be able to put music out and get it out there. And ultimately God's the best marketer. And so he's gonna bring the right people and I'll just check the time with it. Yes, yeah. He yeah. <laughs> yes he is. Oh wow. Yeah, you said you struggled with confidence um when you yeah. started. Um how did you overcome that? Yeah, um, a lot of time with God, a lot of asking him what his opinion was. Um, I've always had really supportive people around me, which I'm grateful for. My family is very supportive. Um, he would bring people like um, just friends and um, and people in the music industry who would help me and come alongside me and open doors for me. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. So he's always continued to do that and bring different artists to work with. Um, that's something I love too about music is collaborating and, and mixing with artists. And you really get to make these amazing friends through that. So, um, but yeah, I overcame confidence, honestly, by just like putting stuff out, having supportive people around me and people who believed in me more than I believed in myself at times too. And I think that was a real blessing. Um, and then once I realized yeah. that the vision that God had for my music, rather than the vision I had, but his yeah. vision for it, then I was like, okay, it's game on. Let's do this. You know, no more, fear, <laughs> no more holding myself back. Like, if the creator of everything has a vision for this and he's shared it with me, then let's do this. And he's gonna provide. So, yeah. Oh wow, that's oh, that's so good. I'm I'm loving this because the information you're giving to them is to either even other creatives that are coming on and watching us. You're giving them hope, where some of them are probably in the same places where you were and are trying to figure it out. And yeah. they just haven't figured out to just turn back to who gave it to you in the first place. Yes, yes. You know? It, yeah. And so God, that, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Yeah, if God's called you to it, like it's gonna happen, you know? And you just rest in that and you trust him. There's just this quiet confidence in who God is. And when he puts a calling on your life, if you just keep saying yes, like his plan will prevail. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, tell me um, when you got started actually um, joining like the groups and getting into your your own um, individual music and actually launching for it. Um, when you launched for it, how did you get started? Like, walk me through what your steps were to get, make sure that you stayed aligned with God and also to make sure that you re reached your goals. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Half of that question cut out the part about groups. Yeah. And oh i was asking like um 
how when you first got started as um, a member of a group or when you started your own music, maybe when you started your own music, like how did you get started? Like walk me through your process of how you sure. got started with that. Well, yeah, so I started singing in studios, uh, I was 16 and um, I was uh, writing for other artists and singing hooks for them. And it came about through like my brother's friends and you know who did music and was like, oh, my sister sings here and I've been doing <laughs> stuff in church and um, you know, leading worship and youth group and main church and things like that. And always it started through worship and, you know, I had that, but then I would also write for other artists and sing for their hooks and things. And then, um, you know, then I would connect with more people. So it just kind of became, God would place this person in this person. So there's a group I work with called Rising Worship and um, I'm still part of that. And we do, we have a full like worship album coming out. Um, hopefully later this year, if we can get it finalized. Mm -hmm. And then um, there were other groups I was part of growing up and um, I'm still part of Rising Worship as well as doing my own music as well, as well as working with um, John Couch and David Lovett and Eden Inspiration. So I actually kind of spread myself out um, and I love that. I love just working with other artists too, but I think how it happened was it kind of just happened organically. Um, I would just ask God to bring people into my life that I could work with and um, Huge thanks to David Lovett. He opened up doors with Eden Inspirations. And um, yeah, and then uh, I've been doing stuff with them. We have a new song coming out next Friday. And then I also have my own EP that I'm working on and my own Just Lissy Ladigan songs. Then I have those songs, then Rising Worship songs. So I kind of have to have a, a, a big um, notebook here that I have and like write everything out oh and collaborate. So, um, it kind of just starts to spiderweb, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's fun. I think that's good. It keeps you on your toes creatively. But yeah, how it started was just asking God to open doors. And and uh, actually, DJ MD, I worked with him. He's an amazing artist. I reached out to him on Instagram, and I was like, hey, I would really love to work with you. You, you inspire me, you know? And even just reaching out to people helps, too. And we put out a song called Fighter. His music's incredible. Totally recommend it. He's a Christian, too. And um yeah, and uh, just, yeah, just getting inspired from other people and, and reaching out and building connections and, and friends, yeah. That's amazing. It's it's like, for me, I see how the connection made, like even when we connected and how we connect to other artists, reaching out and just in expectation that it's going to happen. And I already saying before you get on there, they're not going to deny me, they're not, because that was me, she's not going to deny me, she's not going to deny me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just go for it. And it was just, the feeling that you get when you connect with other creatives and you know that this is like literally God connected. God made sure that there was an open door for you. And it's almost like it's sweatless to be able to talk to someone and they come back to you and you're able to collab and yeah. come up with some amazing music. It's, oh, that must be, see, I don't sing. So I just act like I do in the shower. Oh, I love <laughs> so. the acoustics are great. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so it's like totally different for me. I'm just walking through the house. Just, you know, it's a joyful noise unto the Lord. I won't do it in yeah. front of anybody else, but this is good. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could tell me um, from right now, you have a, your single out. Can you talk about that project? Yeah. Um. So the latest song I put out is In the Light. And I wrote that song actually in this room. Um. I had uh, my friend Michael Honeshell, he filmed that for me. And um, yeah, my friend Third Culture produced that. And um, it was so fun. I literally, that song just came out. I was on the piano and I just started singing. Like, I, yeah, don't yeah. forget what he spoke in the light, even on your darkest night. His promises won't fail. And I was in a point where I was like, God, you've given me these promises, but everything looks the opposite of what you said. And so that's what that song's about. Um, and then I have another single coming out called He Sees Me next Friday with Eden Inspirations. And that song um, is actually just about our life story and how, um, you know, in our, um, in our brightest days and our darkest days, in our belief and our unbelief and our pain and our joy, through everything, he sees us, he knows us, and he's our consistency through all of it. And so um, working with Eden Inspirations is really fun. Um, so John Couch was the senior vice president of education for Apple, and he recently retired. Um, and he actually um, has these poems. And so I'm so grateful I get to create songs with my friend Alton Eugene and we write these songs and we get to put them out. So Alton produced that one. And um, yeah, and so it's coming out Friday and it's just this song to kind of just 
re reminisce about who God's been. And um, yeah. then I have another song in this very moment that I'm finishing up in the studio next week. And that's going to come out probably next month. And um, that oh, one came yeah. from a hard place of like, I've lost all these things and I've gone through incredible loss and pain and um, questions and all these questions coming up, but being like, God, I choose to say that you're still good. You know, um, like David would yeah. pour his heart out in the Bible and be like, God, like what is going on? But still, like I choose to trust you, but still you are good, but still like you're God over yeah. and over you're good. You're always in control. And then, um, you know, and through this darkness, like let the fire come, let the healing come, all of it. Like I'll come out of this dark night shining for you, Jesus, and looking at you. And there's always good, there's always purpose to our pain. And um, so yeah, there's a couple of new songs coming out. And then there's also one with Rising Worship called My Shepherd. And I wrote that with Wes Compton and Nick Harden and um, we do Rising Worship together. And oh, yeah, wow. one about just God leading us through hard times again. So a lot of those songs with hope, hopefully. You have been a busy woman, <laughs> very busy. <laughs> I cannot wait to be able to hear these new songs that's coming out. The collaborations sound amazing. Thank you so much. Like I can only imagine how much fun that is in the studio with these people. <laughs> it oh is. I love people and I love when you write with people and you collaborate with people, you're taking all these different flavors and you're creating this yeah. amazing meal, you know, you know, for someone to receive hope and healing from them. Or, you know, some, yeah, it's beautiful. And, I learned so much from them and it's just a fun environment. I've always been down to collaborate and songwrite and um, I love it. People reach out all the time and I'm like, let's try it, let's do it. Like, let's see what comes about. And it's, yeah, it's a fun part of music for sure. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's so good. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this. Um, as far as what's going on in the world now with the crisis, how have you been holding up with that? Uh, it's been a little hard, yeah. Um, it's been great for creativity, great for writing songs, great for spending time with God. Um, but yeah, it's been hard just to be like, I found myself feeling so much like, not not fear, but just sadness of like, will the world mm -hmm. ever be the way it was? You know, and you kind of miss, I miss traveling. I miss mm -hmm. like, I miss being able to, you know, my family lives <laughs> in Australia. I actually live in America. Um, so I moved out here to do music and oh, wow. worship ministry and all of that. So. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm thinking like, when will I next see them? They were supposed to come over, so that's sad. And, you know, they can't now because um, of the travel ban with Australia and different things. So everything just looks very different in my life right now. But I, it's just more opportunity to trust God. Yes. Um, and I've definitely been, yeah, like praying for, you know, everyone that's been getting sick, um, for the people who have lost their jobs. Um, yeah, it's been a it's been an interesting time, but honestly, I think that God is using it to, for one, like consecrate His church again, and number two, I think that God is helping people to really um, be free of things that were just stagnant and and um, habits that they had, and just get them to have a refreshing, and um, and then also I think it's really yeah. making people think of eternal perspective. So I believe there's going to be a great harvest after this. Oh, true. And that's why I say he's cleansing the earth and just putting everybody into their rightful place and even calling others unto him because people are finding him now. They're seeking Absolutely. him even the more. So yeah. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement with that. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So um, what would you say? Hmm. Let's see. I'm trying to figure this out because I was just thinking about it. you said you, you miss traveling because you know we were supposed to come to you. So, <laughs> so it was like, oh no, we can't travel. So oh I'm just happy you were able to get on with us for this one. Um give me one moment. No worries, yeah. Um, okay, so the question I have is like right now, what was the best advice given to you as an artist that made you like push to your next? Yeah. Um, stay encouraged, keep going, write, record, release, repeat. <laughs> just don't pay attention to oh, wow. that, but just like keep going. Consistency is huge. Um, as an artist, I write every day. I remember being in Bible college. I went to Hillsong College and uh, Bethel's ministry school. And when I was in mm -hmm. Hillsong College, I remember hearing Joel Houston talk and he said he would write at least one song a day. This was back in 2011. And I remember thinking one song a day, like, how do you even do that? And now I've pushed myself to where that's my normal one song a day and sometimes even three songs a day. Like I'm, I'm pushing myself because 
Um, I think the older you get, the more you just realize like time is going so fast. And I mean, we're already in May right mm -hmm. now. I, I just have this conviction in my heart that I want to leave a legacy for God and I want to mm -hmm. create as much music as I can um, for people to have encounters with God and to receive hope and healing. Because I know um, I dealt with depression yeah. in the past and, um, uh, and anxiety in the past. And the music was a huge way that I um, got through that because it helped me connect with God and instantly feel his presence. So when I figured out that um, mm -hmm. you could create music that gives people encounters to connect with God, and that was how it is for my, that is how it is for my own life. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I was very compelled to, um, to take it very seriously. And so, um, yeah, so I think um, that's something that's helped is consistency. That was one of the best pieces of advice I ever got, just one yeah. word. Be consistent with your content mm -hmm. creating, um, and create content that adds value to people. Um, and also uh, work, you know, um, having great people around you that inspire you and encourage you mm -hmm. and uplift you, believe in you um, more than you believe in yourself some days. That's important, you know. Yes. You all feel like giving up at different times, and um, but keep going, you know. And if God really gave you that vision, keep going. And um, the other thing is um, my friend Nathan, we were saying write, record, release, repeat. Like that's, that's if you just the consistency mm -hmm. and just, you don't stop. You just keep going, you keep pushing. And, um, you know, I remember seeing even Ed Sheeran, he had this great quote where he was sharing and he said about the 10,000 hour rule. He said, if you mm -hmm. just write and you just write and you write and you write, it's like a faucet on the side of the house. And if you turn it, you know, dirty water will come out if it hasn't been turned on for a while. Right. And eventually this beautiful clean water comes out, you know, as clean as the tap water can be. So that's how it is with songwriting. You're like, oh, these songs are not that good. I don't want to show these to anyone. And then eventually you're like, oh, I think we got something. And the more you write, the yeah. more you keep that muscle going, that songwriting muscle and that creativity muscle, the more that um, what you create is going to really resonate with people and um, be at a standard that you're really happy with. So. Those are some great pieces wow. of that I received. That is some really good advice. <laughs> that is really good advice. I'm over here like, really? <laughs> Repeat. Okay. Over and over again. Let's keep it going. I got it. That's amazing. Uh, we have some um, comments coming up. They're like, yes, they're in agreement. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question about the, um, like, if, in the industry, we know that I your thoughts about how things work better. So what is one thing that you would change in the industry? Oh, I'm asking to repeat? Yeah. Okay. What, what would be one of the things that you would change in the industry? Yeah. Um, it's a great question. I think that um, maybe, I don't know. I think probably like a way for artists to be more supported for their creations. I think one thing in the music industry, especially being indie, um, the financial side can be a, a bit challenging. So you got to be creative. But I think like some type mm -hmm. of, I know there's like Patreon and there's like different ways that artists um, can be blessed financially through that. So yeah, probably that's probably the one thing is just um, with the impact that music does make. Um, yeah, the financial side of it. But otherwise, like I love yeah. I love the access that there is right now. I think that's something that I would have wished would have changed a long time ago. But now it's like, this is amazing. Like literally I can put out music and I look at my Spotify stats on my phone, you know, and it tells me that there's people in Uganda and Mexico and Russia. And it's like, it's so cool. You have access to these different countries you may never get to go to or you might get to go to. Yeah. You get to hear your music and, you know, you get messages from people who are like, oh, wow, like this song really touched me. And, and, you know, and you might never get to meet them in person, but it's so cool to get to hear their story. Or you might get to meet them. That'd be awesome, too. Um, so yeah, I love that. And also for, you know, um, I, it'd be awesome if, um, I think, for the music industry, the touring aspect, for that to be able to come back soon would be so cool. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, being able to do shows. I was doing a lot of shows last year. Getting to connect with people is really fun. So, yes. it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's one of the things that we do. We actually um, have a platform for artists to come on and show what God has gifted them with. Awesome. And so this year we had a lot of things planned and it's like, oh, there's a crisis. We can't do those. Wow. So now we're just trying to figure out another way to do everything, which is why we like, oh, go online. Let's make sure that we're still present 
and people still see us. Let's make sure we're praying for people online yeah. and making sure we offer our services still to them. So it's been amazing to just be able to still connect. Yes. And stay connected with people in the world and just letting them know there's still hope that this is not over and this is not the end, that we're still just pushing for it. So that yeah. is, this is really good for me. I'm like loving this, <laughs> taking it all in. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. um, let me ask you, what what's next for you? Like um, where will you be in the next five years or you expect for yourself to be in the next five years? Yeah. So um I just came out of a very long writing season, uh years of writing and writing and writing. And not a lot of releasing or recording. Um, okay. But now for me, I'm thankfully in this stage where I'm going to be doing a lot of releasing and recording, or recording and releasing. So um, I'm really excited to put these songs out. I think um, I've been sitting on them for a really long time, writing a lot and figuring out my sound, my message, um, always my message. I want it to glorify God. Um, but I've also been writing songs that are going to touch more of like, mainstream and then there's also worship songs and then there's congregational songs i've been really stretching myself to write to you know different genres and figure out yeah who i want to be as an artist i think that's really important in finding your sound um and collaborating and everything so the next couple years um i really want to just give it all i have and um i've been um doing this new um kind of routine with myself where i'm being very intentional to um, to write out a list of songs to put out this year, um, the people that I'm you know going to be uh, working with, different things like that, and just yeah, just staying very like tunnel vision. <laughs> so um, yeah. I really, when I took it seriously that this is a call from God, not just like a hobby. This is like something that God is very yes. specifically, you know, He's putting my hands. I want to stand before Him and be like, God. You know, I'm sorry. I don't want to stand before him and be like, I didn't take it seriously. You know, I want to right. be like, God, I, I gave this everything I had. And I literally poured my heart and soul and life into this. My blood, sweat, tears, lots of tears into this. <laughs> <laughs> and long hours in the studio and long times. Oh, I just, I want to, like, that's where my head is. It's not for me. It's for him. It's to be like, I want him to tell me one day, like, hey, these people got saved because of these songs. And that person yeah. was about to commit suicide. They, they were struggling with depression, mm -hmm. but they heard this song. I was able to take this song that you created with me, and I was able to drop that in their lap, and they were able to step out of that moment where the enemy was trying to kill, steal, and destroy. I want to see people receive life and encounters with God. And so, yeah, that's kind of like the heart behind what I do. And the next couple of years, I'd love to tour. I've got two full albums written out actually. So this is gonna take a, a bit of time to record and release them all, but it's written and um, I'll continue to write as I'm in that process. I'd love to write with more artists. Um, it'd be awesome to get signed if that's God's will for me one day. Um, love to do shows, tours, just, yeah, just immerse myself in this and give it everything I have, so. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I'm like, this is, yeah. I love that part of just, you know, making sure that you, you're all poured out. You know, yes. and then that's pointing to somebody else that's coming behind you to carry it on to the next thing. So mm -hmm. that's amazing. It's amazing. I, okay, so I want to do a little fun thing. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, like the last thing is um, yeah, like with, with that whole topic too. Um, I like to look at every day as a gift I can give back to God because it says, you know, that every day is like this is the this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So mm -hmm. a good perspective as a creative is to be like, or even a person in general, how can I give this day back to yeah. God as a gift? And so oh, I think God. pouring ourselves into everything we have into him and the call in our lives, um, it's such a privilege to to be called by him and to be chosen by him. And so yeah, so that's something that um I try to keep in the front of my mind and Writing it out helps a lot. Write the vision, make it plain. Like the scripture does not lie. Yes. <laughs> That's real. Yes. Because when you were saying about your list of things that you do and making sure that you do it every day and having it, you know, set up, I was thinking about, I have a, the expectation and progression plan. That's oh, what it sounds like what you're doing. And it's like, this is amazing because you're writing out what you're expecting and the progress is just, you're just going to take yeah. off. Man. And it's, <laughs> it's already set up to be great. Yes. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. So people are commenting. I'm seeing them jumping them. They're like, woo, new music. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited. 
Oh, wow. So we have a question um, just popped up uh, from our listeners. I told them just pop in with questions. So um, we have a question from Shonda Alicia. Who are some of your musical influences? Yes. Um, gosh, I love so many different types of music. Um, I really love, um, you know, Kim Walker, Jesus Culture, Carrie Job, um, Bethel Music, Leland. Um, yeah, uh, I love just the way they bring people into worship. Obviously, they have some incredible songs. Uh, Waymaker's been like a huge favorite for sure. The Blessing, yeah. super beautiful. Um, I love uh, Tori Kelly. I love her vocal runs. I'm so impressed by that. She's yeah. incredible. <laughs> I got to meet her last year, actually. And she's just so like humble and sweet. And um, yeah, she was really nice. And uh, I love, also, I love 116. I love like- oh. <laughs> okay, so Kiss Noah sitting over here working the machine. He's like, yes. Yeah, yeah, I do. I love, I love some like Christian hip hop. I love like, I love actually. Gabi just put out a new album. I was so yeah. impressed by that. Um, yeah, I I love everything. I love a lot of music. Like, yeah, there's a lot. But those are some I of love the versatility and what you like. The versatility and what you listen to. I love that. <laughs> It's a nice mix. I cannot wait to see who you formulate into. Right. Thanks, <laughs> As an artist. Yeah, I was listening to a lot of like um Lecrae growing up, a lot of Christian. I still listen to Lecrae. He's great. Um, I was listening to a lot of just different types of music all the time and working in studios when I was younger too. And um I was singing for a lot of rappers and I would sing a lot of their hooks, you know, they normally have like the female on the hook and things like that. Yeah. And um and I love hip hop music. I love it. I love the beat. Um, just it's fun. It's a vibe. It gets you, you know, like hyped up and happy. And, oh, yeah. um, and then I was also leading worship and writing all sorts of stuff. I've written like, yeah, all sorts of stuff. So I, I love immersing myself in music because I feel like you kind of pick and take things from it as well, even subconsciously. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. I learned something new. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Well, let me ask you this. I don't know. Are you vocally ready to throw out a couple of little tunes with me? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I didn't warm up. Okay. So <laughs> that's why I'm like, let, let me ask first before I have you do it. Okay. I was, yeah, I was in the studio late last night, so it might be a little rough, but well, yeah. Oh, that's okay. Listen, it's, it's an impromptu moment. It's okay. um, literally just asking like um, what songs in certain areas, like if you needed uplifting, what would be one song that you would sing? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, is that, is that the first one? Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, the first one, do you want me to sing it or you want me to just tell you? Yeah, sing it. Oh, That's sing it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so for uplifting right now, definitely Waymaker. Um, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keep the light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to run up out of this. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Okay, give it a <laughs> okay. So when you're just having a really good day and it's like one of those happy days and you just feel it in your spirit. Yeah. Um, oh, um, how about like Hillsong Young and Free? Um, oh my gosh. Uh, so I let go and I let love show me life like it's supposed to be in an oasis. Here awaits us, you're the freedom I'll ever need. Now I'm alive, all I like, all I like. When I let go, then I find life. I like that one. Oh my <laughs> gosh, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, oh my goodness. So is there a song that you, that you refer to? Like if you, I want to say when you finish dropping your song, like, mm -hmm. is there a song that came to you right after your song dropped and you knew it was out there for the world to sing, mm -hmm. to hear? Is it, Oh, is there a song that came after it? Like, do you mean um, one that I'd already written? Or sorry. Yeah, or something just, uh, either something that you written or something that just was in your spirit. Was there lyrics that just came to you? Yeah, um, In the Light. Um, there's one song by, um, when I dropped that, something that came to mind was... Um, 
You're Gonna Be Okay with uh, Bethel Music. Such a beautiful song. Yeah. And that, like, um, I, oh, I wish I could remember all the lyrics. Um, so just take one step closer, just one foot in front of the other. You will get through this, just follow the light in the darkness. Oh my gosh. Okay. I love that one. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Look, and I'm just sitting here like, I'm just going to listen. Oh. I, just, I forgot what I was going to ask next. I'm like, oh, I'm just listening. I'm just listening. Right? I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry. He's over there like, what is going on with you? I'm like, I'm just listening. Because, it, you know, it's like when you when you sing, I'm just going, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Really? Oh. It's, it's I, I heard one of your songs, and I do not remember the name of the song, but it was playing on the radio. I think they was playing it in the, um, on one of the stations Brandon was listening to. And I was going, who is that? And he's like, I have to find out. And I kept going, I, I haven't heard it again. And then I heard your, your song on your page. And I was like, it's her. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> It might have been fighter. I'm not sure. I think it was. I was just like, oh my goodness. But I only heard a snippet of it as it was going off. And I was like, I need to know who that is. And when I heard it, I was like, that's, that's her, that's her. I was like, oh, let me follow her on everything. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you reached out. I'm so excited to get to connect with you. And when you shared your, yeah, when you guys are sharing your heart about what you do, why you do what you do, I was, I was so blessed by that. You know, it's oh. beautiful. Yeah. You guys thank are awesome. You. Thanks for connecting. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm just, okay. So I'm going to ask questions because they are dropping questions in for you all oh, here. Okay. Cool. They want to know um, if you had to choose who would be your, who would you do a feature with? Oh man, there's so many. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, I would love to work with, um, Anyone from 116, I think that'd be so fun. <laughs> um, I'd love to work with, I love 1K Few. I'm like really into oh, wow. his like style as well. Lecrae, Wandy, all of them. Yeah. Um, what up, RG? All of them are so cool. Um, yeah, like that. Andy Manio, he's cool. Uh, I'd love to work with Tori Kelly. I really love what she okay. does. I think that'd be cool. Uh, Carrie Joe, Cody Carnes. I think Run to the Father is one of my favorite songs right now. And I would love to work with them. That would be so cool. Um, I, yeah, I look up to all sorts of artists and, um, I'm always just, I would be so honored to work with anyone. I'm, I love getting to work with people. People reach out to my DMs all the time and, um, about working together. And I'm like, I would love to, let's give it a go. Let's see what we can make happen. Um, yeah. And there's a couple of artists that I'm really grateful to get to, uh, work with. They're indie as well, but, um, we have some songs coming out and, um, I'm really inspired by their work. So that's fun. But yeah, I hope and pray that I get to continue to work with people because it's it's just so fun to get to collaborate. Yes, I've said, because I always sit and do, I mean, I would love to hear this person with that person. Yeah. The person who I thought about for you was Miranda Curtis. Oh, that would be cool. And I was thinking that would be amazing just to hear them <laughs> sing it. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be really cool. Yeah, that'd be an honor too. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, that would be gorgeous. Do we have any other questions? I'm just checking and making sure before okay. I... Jump on to anything else? Okay, so um, let me ask you, I do have this other question I wanna ask you oh. about. Um, and that question is, what message would you give to creatives that are at home now trying to figure out who they wanna be or how to get started? What would be your yes. suggestion to them? Yes, um, get a vocal coach. I love my vocal coach, he's incredible. Um, and he really pushes me. Um, one of the biggest, there's a lot I could say to this. I don't know how much you want me to answer, <laughs> but <laughs> um, you got the floor. <laughs> oh, thanks, girl. Um, there's so much stuff that I wish I had known then that I that I know now, and I'm sure I'll feel that way in like another year, six months. Mm -hmm. But things that I've learned right now um, are definitely get a vocal coach, invest in that, invest in your craft, um, consistency. And also your fans want to grow with you. Your followers mm -hmm. want to grow with you as an artist. I've, I met a lot of artists over the years working with them and they never put out things because they didn't want it to not be at a level of perfection. Um, but with art, I feel like it's it's very um, pick and choose, you know, what people uh, relate mm -hmm. with, with what they don't. That's why people have very different artists that mm -hmm. they love, right? And so, um, 
if you're not putting out things because it's not perfection, perfection doesn't really exist, but but seek to be excellent in your craft. Yeah. Um, and you'll know when it's hit excellence. Like if you listen to your song, like when you're gonna put out music, listen to it and be like, is there anything that I hear that's off or it stands out in a bad way? And if the song sounds good, if you believe in it, if you love a song, there's gonna be other people out there who love the song too and will support that message. So I think it's, um, and if, you're, if your song has like a message of hope and encouragement for other people, that's really important as well. So yeah, invest in a vocal coach, let your following grow with you, let your fans grow with you, give them, you know, put out excellent stuff, but um, don't hold yourself back by comparison. And um, even as you're still finding your sound, you know, um, great things will happen if you're still putting out stuff as you're growing. It's cool, there's even artists who are out there that, you know, for example, Taylor Swift, she was putting out different albums and her sound was still evolving and she's the superstar doing incredible things and has a huge following, but even her sound was evolving from, you know, red to, I can't remember the other title mm -hmm. of the new albums, but um, yeah, let people grow with you. Um, don't give into comparison and get a, get a why from God for why you're doing what you're doing. Cause that's gonna help you when you get, if you get no's, if you get um, roadblocks, if you get discouraged, if you doubt in your music, when you have that why, that's going to carry you through. And, you know, unless we, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. So make sure that, like, he's building that house with you. And, and I think that if your heart is to, um, is in the right place, then, you know, um, God's going to bless that. And so those are some pieces of advice. And um, also work with other artists because that's going to help you grow. It can seem kind of scary to songwrite and collaborate with people. Um, at first, I remember it felt really intimidating, but now it's one of my favorite things because some of the greatest songs out there have multiple writers on it. And so it's very cool to get to collaborate. Yeah. And you never know. One door opens up another door and the next one. And um, just continue to stay humble and work hard. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, what do you think about like the copywriting situation? I know that a lot of um, artists, new artists are dropping music on like Instagram and they're dropping them on SoundCloud still and yeah. they're not copywriting, but we try to teach them to make sure that there's some way that you have it set up that is yours. So what do you think about that whole process with copyright? Yeah, um, I was taught that if you email it to yourself, then you have record that that was originally your song. So keep the voice memos, keep all of the, um, keep proof of you writing it, um, right. keep proof of um, your voice memos of creating it. Um, I always record with my phone um, and have like, not for that purpose, but it helps for that purpose. Um, when I write, I always record it on my phone on iTalk. And um, I just press record and do my whole writing process. So I literally have proof that I wrote that song. Um, and I have proof of, even if it's a writing session, I have proof of like who did what. And it's just it's just good to like have proof of that. Um, and then also um, emailing it, if you have that in your emails that you also have proof of that. And then joining BMI or ASCAP or um, some, some type of you know uh, organization that's gonna have your back if something like that does happen. But um, even, yeah, just, you know, posting it on YouTube, having things out there, just make sure you have copies of proof of your work. And you can, you know, if you need to, hopefully you never do, but if you ever did need to, you would have proof that you originated that song. Okay. So you said that you have an EP coming out soon. Yes. Off of that EP, what is, well, what's the name of the EP if you have that already? And yeah. what would be one of your favorite songs that would be coming out with that? Sure. Um, so the EP is going to be called Look Up, and it's coming out of basically that whole season of there was a lot of stuff going on um, the past couple of years that tried to take my um, perspective and discourage me, but I chose to look up and God was like, just keep focused on me. And, you know, the storms that come your way are only to strengthen you. Like it's to actually lead you into your destiny and your calling and the person God wants you to be. It's to strengthen you and make you better. So um, that song I have, um, uh, it's more of like a hip hop song and it's gonna, it's, there's a song called Look Up On It. Um, between um, my bro Marcel Taylor and another artist that I'm excited to work with. Um, and so that will be one song. Then there's In This Very Moment, so that's going to be the single. Um, and then there's, um, I'm going to put In The Light on there and a couple other ones too. So it's still in the works. Um, it's not fully finished yet, but I'm excited for that EP. And I, I think the one I'm most excited for is um, In This Very Moment, 
because I think that's going to speak to a lot of people. And it's probably one of my most vulnerable songs I've ever written. Oh, wow. Yes. In the Light really was like on point for me when I heard it because literally um, we were transitioning from one place into another and I had gotten really sick. And so this song was like, yes, thank you. So I just, I've been holding on to it, just listening to it. And when you dropped the video, <laughs> I was like, how is she doing a video right now? Oh, girl. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> I was like, what is happening? And so I was looking at it. I was like, oh my God. And I kept telling it. I'm like, she looks absolutely beautiful. She is sounding so beautiful. And this background is amazing. It's amazing. So, how did it feel to be even in the midst of things that's going on now and doing that video? How did that work? Yeah, we actually recorded that video. Um, Michael helped me with that, Michael Hohenstelt. And um, he, we actually, yeah, we recorded that video right before all the COVID stuff went crazy. So the timing was good for that, frankly. Um, I wanted to get some more videos out, but obviously we have to wait for COVID stuff to clear. Um, but thankfully we got that just in time. So he had time to edit it and then release it. Um, but that makes me so happy to hear that about In the Light and that it blessed you and encouraged you during that time. Yeah. I love hearing song stories like that. That really makes me so happy and is why I do what I do is just to, to help people and to bring hope and encouragement. So um yeah but that um that video was really fun he's very talented and I, i'm super grateful to have him as part of my team and helping me out so yeah it's been fun okay so just a couple of more questions um yeah. if you weren't the artist that you are what is it that you would be doing outside of music yeah um so i was gonna study psychology <laughs> i was gonna be studying nutrition um, oh, wow. I thought about doing business, but I actually, so I, I got accepted to um, college for those things and then also for music. And that still small quiet voice told me go to Hillsong College. And I said, God, there's no <laughs> degree with that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but he just said to me, you know, he'd been um, highlighting to me music. And, you know, I, I at that point, um, this was back in like, yeah, 2010. And um, 2011, and I, I just said, God, like music, mm -hmm. me, why? Like, there's so many other, other people out there. Why would you want to use me? And this, this is my whole process. Mm -hmm. And um, God took me through this really long season of just like encouraging me and like, hey, I, I have a message that I've put in you that I want to get out. And mm -hmm. um, so I literally, it took me probably like, <laughs> like I was doing music, but to fully commit, it took me years to actually be like. This, I was like, God, I need to know that this is you and this is not just me. Like, I needed to know that he was with me in it because um, I just, I, there was a lot of reasons. And I, I just said, God, like, I need to know, like, that if I'm going to build this house that you're going to, you're, you know, I don't want to labor in vain. I want to make sure that you're behind this and I want to be doing my calling. So if this is my calling, then I'll give it everything. Um, that's kind of where that all started. And um yeah, so I, I was going to do all those things, but ended up going to Hillsong College and studying worship ministry and songwriting and, and music. And it all just kind of opened up from there. Um, the first season of The Voice, they gave me um, a private audition to come in and audition. And uh, I did terrible, but <laughs> I was so nervous. My knees were shaking. It was really bad. <laughs> but um, I remember there was like a camera and the producers and there's like four producers, this big camera and I'm standing there and I'm like, oh gosh, it was the round right before the TV one. And I just, I bombed it. But I remember from that day, God broke stage right off of me. So I, I used to go up and lead worship and I would shake, my hands would shake, I would be nervous. But literally after that moment, after that opportunity, um, I no longer had stage fright. I could, I, even if I was in a room and you'd be like, sing for me, I would have been so scared. But that moment God used to break fear off of me in singing in front of people. So now it's like, mm -hmm. it's not even scary for me at all, um, which is such a blessing, you know, if it's however many people for a video shoot, anything, there's just this confidence. So it was fun to see through all of this. Sorry, this isn't your question anymore, but it was so great. It was fun to see God like use random, random, random situations to break fear and yeah. insecurity and doubt off of me and help me to step further into um, the call that he had for my life. So for people who are watching too, like just go with the process. It, I saw this really funny picture and it's it's that picture where it's like 
God's plan. And it's like A to B. Oh, yeah. like, how it actually looks. And it's like up, down, down, through this hallway, back around school. <laughs> it's everywhere. I was in the car thinking about that the other day. That's so real. And his ways are not our ways, but the Bible also says they're way higher than ours. So he knows what he's doing. And um, just, yeah, trust the process. So that's what I would have been doing. But I, I'm so grateful that, you know, it hasn't always been easy, but I'm so grateful that I've trusted him in this and continued in it. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see um, his promises and just, yeah, and just keep seeing what he's got. So. Yes, thank you, Hillsong College. <laughs> that was amazing. Well, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, well, my other question, my last question for me, I'm checking over my head. Like, do we have any other questions? Okay. So oh, yeah. my last question for me is, um, coming out of everything, like when the world opens back up, where's the one place that you would want to go to just to be able to sit, breathe and meditate? Yeah. Um, I would like travel wise. I would love to, I love Hawaii. <laughs> I love the beach. Oh, wow. That would be nice. Is this, is this like hypothetical yeah. or is this like something I'm having planned? What you, you like your plans? Like, what do you want to do? Oh, what do I want to do? Oh, sorry. Okay. I, okay. Um, I'm, I, I, I would love to, um, I, yeah, I'd love to just be able to do shows and connect with people and just, um, there was, yeah, there was a lot of things that had to be postponed because of COVID. And so it would be so nice to be able to, yeah, just get out there and share this music, connect with people. Um, and It'll be so nice, I think, to be able to travel again, see my family um, yeah. and different friends in different places. And yeah, just to, to get the show on the road some more. <laughs> so, oh, yes. Amazing. Yeah. I like the Hawaii idea, too. Yeah, I, really Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> I love the beach. <laughs> it's really beautiful there. So. Yeah, it's something about the water and the view. It's just so calming. And yeah. it's, it's just relaxation. So that's amazing. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much, so much for coming on with us and actually giving us the time to be able to talk to you and learn more about you and to see what your thoughts about things are in your life and just your story is amazing. So I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful. This is such a blessing to get to be on here with you guys. And yeah, I really appreciate connecting with you and you taking this time. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, wow. Awesome. Thank you all for tuning in with us with Miss Lissy Lagan, and we appreciate you. Look out for her new music that's coming out. How can they follow you? Can you give us your social media handles and of course. connection? Um, yeah, so there's um, YouTube. It's uh, youtube.com slash Lissy Ladigan. Um, and then Instagram is at Lissy Ladigan Music. And then on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, it's Lissy Ladigan. So L-I-S-S-Y-L-A-T-E-G-A-N right there. So, yeah. Awesome. So thank you all for joining us. This has been amazing. I, I had a dream of mine come true, so I'm excited about this. That's awesome. <laughs> You're amazing. Thank you so much. This made my day. This is such a blessing to get to do this. Yes, it, it's been a blessing to be able to talk to you. And I, I honor and just give God glory for all that he's doing in your life. And we expect for you to do great things. And we want to let you know that we'll be praying for you, oh, for you to be able to do all that you have lined up. So according to his word and his will, because we know that's where you flow from. So thank, thank you so much for joining us. And if you hold on one second, we're going to close out. But I really, really appreciate you so much. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you too. You're amazing. Thank you so much for this time. It was so fun. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.